right now. Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. 637 on WMAL. Brian Neiman, Brian Wilson. It's already Thursday. And of it course, sure means is. it's uh, Landy Davis Day here at the ballpark. That's right. Uh, Landy joins us now from her White House uh, counsel for Bill Clinton. Good morning, Landy. How are you? I, I'd rather be Strasburg Day with 11 strikeouts yesterday, but yeah, uh, I'll, I'll do my best not to strike out with you guys. Uh, that sounds great. So, <laughs> Nats in first place. I like the I yeah. like the modern reference. Way to go, Lanny. Um, but, let me ask you this. Can I, I just say that when, when, when you're in Washington and you become a fanatic Nats fan, all the negative ads and all the food <laughs> fights going on in the presidential campaign seem far less important. Well, that was where I was going to start with sounds, the sounds negative like, ads. Sounds like, sounds like Nanny's got natitude. Yes, he does got some natitude. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. A, Sorry. That's a, that's a clown phrase, bro. <laughs> um, here's my question, though, for you. you. You hate negative ads, and obviously the president has run negative ads, and Mitt Romney runs negative ads. But do you really think that President Obama can win re-election on his record? And if so, you lay out the case for why Barack Obama should be elected because of the positive things that he has done. Yeah, uh, first of all, I don't think there's any choice. I ultimately think, and the the, the polls are showing, that when you go negative and you sound negative and you seem nasty, you're depleting the greatest asset that Barack Obama has, that probably even you all would agree with, is that he has up to now come across as a nice guy. And even people who disagree with him politically in polls give him high personal favorable ratings, just as George Bush had personal favorable ratings much higher than John Kerry, because George Bush was and is a nice guy. He's beginning to lose that because he looks nasty, political, and I think it's no, it has no alternative but to give this up, because his story is reasonable. He has a tough economy, a tough argument, but he's got to make the case he's done his best under difficult circumstances, and some of the things he's done is pre- are pretty good, in my opinion, and the American people are fair. I I just don't think the negative ultimately is doing anything other than depleting his greatest asset, which is he's a nice guy. You know, in, in, in politics, it's it's not what you say sometimes, it's how you say it. Right. And and you agree with on that, I know. And I, I noticed that, you know, much has been said about these, these comments about you didn't build that, whether it was taken out of context or whether it was not taken out of context. But the one thing that I have come to observe about that later is that the tone and tenor Correct. of what the president was saying was very negative. Correct. You, you know, we, negative. You didn't do that. It's yeah. nasty. And people can tell the difference. And it was amazing contrast. I saw him uh, being kind of sarcastic and nasty and petty and coming across as somebody, you just don't like that guy. And then all of a sudden I see him looking into the camera, very statesman, saying, this is my energy program, this is what I want to do to create jobs. It's a philosophy where government is a partner, not the enemy, and that's a different idea than my opponent has. And I thought, wow, that's just what the American people want to know. What's the difference between you and Romney? He seems serious. He was a Barack Obama that got elected in 08. Somehow, David Axelrod thinks that that great asset, where he's so good on TV, in the camera, he's depleting by making him into a nasty politician. And that's what I write in today's uh, Purple Nation column, if you don't mind me shamelessly plugging my column, that there are a lot of people right after the horrible tragedy of Aurora who saw these two men, and I'm not a great fan of Mitt Romney's, really impressing me as statesmen, as uplifting, as bringing us together. And then within 48 hours, I saw the slop, and that's a nice word to say on radio, of these two uh, negative food fight ads going on all over again. But politics is hardball, to go back to our opening comments. And, you know, that's how you win elections. And for I, I just don't see how... Barack Obama can run a campaign that solely touts his record because people look at it and they say the unemployment rate's up, the economy's not in good shape, people don't think he's right for pushing the economy forward, they think Mitt Romney is better, and even his signature domestic policy, which is the health care law, most Americans don't like it, and uh, they would like to see it go. So uh, now I'll grant you that on, on, on national security issues, he probably has probably has support behind him all that, although I think in the long run what we've done isn't going to help us. But w- I, just explain to me what you want him to run on. All right, well, this is a reasonable tactical debate. I've been in uh, political campaigns most of my adult life and every presidential campaign but this one. The, the difference in the debate of tacticians is if you have a difficult hand when you're dealt, 
a number of issues that are negative which Barack Obama has to deal with, and that's the economy. Do you try to change the subject, uh, the, the subject and assume everybody is stupid and they're not going to remember the stuff in your record that bothers them because you're attacking the other guy? And there are some people who say, yes, that's what you do. Or do you do a better job of explaining the negatives and emphasizing the positives. In other words, you assume people are intelligent. They want an explanation why the economy is bad. What have you done that hasn't worked? What are you going to do in the future that might work? And compare it to the other guy. I'm a believer, especially if you've got a great asset where you're likable, which Barack Obama had up to this point, and you see his negatives have gone way up as being not likable because of these ads. I'm a believer in you've got it contrast yourself with the other guy. If that's negative, you do it on the issues. You don't do it personal. Right. But you tell your story much better. On health care, by the way, the polls are split right now. Dead heat between those who like the health care law and those who don't. And this is, remember, after Barack Obama has never explained this health care bill effectively. I want to ask you about another topic, and that is a, a negative that the Obama administration is going to have to deal with is the issue of these national security leaks. Now, I think you will agree with me, Lanny, that Dianne Feinstein is a serious and sober politician. She is the uh, Democratic chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, and she said the other day that she felt that the president needs to be aware of the fact that some of these national security leaks are coming from within White House ranks, and yet uh, David Axelrod is insisting that is not the case. What do you think about about this? Well, somebody has to find out, and there needs to be an investigation. George Bush allowed uh, an independent uh, investigation that led in the Valerie Plame matter to an indictment and a conviction of some of the, the closest uh, aides in the White House. We have is an undisputed fact that Dick Cheney authorized the reading of a highly classified uh, document to Judy Miller in order to, to uh, deal with the Valerie Plame matter. So that was wrong, as just as, as Senator Feinstein points out, if somebody in the White House briefed uh, and revealed national security information. When I was there, I, re, uh, I was classified uh, at the highest level, but I was not classified at what's called compartmentalized, which is what uh, is the highest uh, national security uh, level. So th that was what was revealed by uh, Scooter Libby when he read uh, the document to Judy Miller. That's a matter of undisputed fact. If that occurred in this White House, Diane Feinstein is right. There needs yeah. to be an investigation. And I know that Eric Holder has two U.S. attorneys one of whom is a Republican, one of whom is a D.C. Uh, uh, U.S. attorney, who people say uh, uh, is a Democrat, but I don't think that matters. They're professionals. They are investigating. If anybody did this, then they should be prosecuted. All right. Why not? Why not have a special prosecutor though, like the Bush administration did? Well, you know, for me to be consistent, I opposed Ken Starr. I opposed uh, the independent <laughs> councils in the 80s who investigated Republicans. And I, I think the going back to the days of uh, letting people be independent of the Justice Department, I don't recommend. But uh, I would say that if it's necessary to assure the public that there's absolutely nothing uh, going to deter the investigation, right and there's anything compromising about what's going on now, then I would favor one, but only as a last resort. Lanny Davis, thank you for joining us.